Turn to me and have mercy, O Lord, for I am alone and poor. See my lowliness and suffering, and take away all my sins, my God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all that works for our good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power, proclaim the word. Be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but following their own desires and insatiable curiosity, will accumulate teachers and will stop listening to the truth and will be diverted to myths. But you, be self-possessed in all circumstances, put up with hardship, perform the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The word of the Lord. I will sing of your salvation. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, with your glory day by day. Cast me not off in my old age, as my strength fails, forsake me not. I will sing of your salvation. But I will always hope and praise you evermore and more. My mouth shall declare your justice day by day, your salvation. I will sing of your salvation. I will treat of the mighty works of the Lord. O God, I will tell your singular justice. O God, you have taught me from my youth, and till the present I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will sing of your salvation. So will I give you thanks with music on the lyre. For your faithfulness, O my God, I will sing your praises with the harp. O Holy One of Israel, I will sing of your salvation.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces seats of honor in the synagogues, and places of honor at the banquets. They devour the houses of widows and, as a pretext, recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury, for they have all contributed from their surplus. But she, from her poverty, has contributed all that she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. The second story in today's gospel is so interesting um, for just a number of reasons. And maybe it's just a, it's a matter of trying to summarize what would you say the point of this, th- this passage is. And on the one hand, you might say it's something along the lines of, you know, you know what St. Therese of Lisieux said is, you know, that we need to do little things with great love. Or, you know, it could be something along the lines of, you know, God looks at the heart more so than he looks at, you know, the external action or something like that. Um, I want to focus on just another aspect of the whole thing, and that's the fact that isn't it marvelous that God even notices the small things in the first place? You know, that God is standing there in the temple, and he, you know, God's words are precious, you know. (laughs) Like it's, it's what he's commenting on. It's what he's noticing. It's he's, what he's wanting to teach us as an example. And he's looking at all the people entering into the temple area and all the people who are dropping large Benjamins into the collection box go by without comment from our Lord. But it's when that one woman who gives the two coins, when she puts those in, that our Lord deems it worthy uh, to comment on and says about how generous she was because she gave so much proportionally of her income. But the fact of the matter is, is the amazing thing in the first place is that God sees our small actions and he actually cares about them. That, just think about that for a second. I mean, all those um, small little victories that you have um, in your daily life over sin, all those small acts of goodness that you do, that God sees those things. That's just incredible. That's mysterious. And the question might be, we might ask ourselves, I mean, because sometimes maybe that's hard for us to believe that God cares about, you know, the small things that we do. But maybe I just want to offer you a little bit of perspective on why that might be. And the reason why that is, is because there are very few large actions in this world that happen unless there were small acts of virtue that happened beforehand. Even the people who made their millions of dollars, how was it that they made their millions of dollars in the first place? Well, it's probably because they woke up every morning, early in the morning, they worked long days, they put in the time, they put in the effort, 
they made the sacrifices, and that is how they made their millions. It's not, you can look at the end result, and that's one thing, but it's also the process, the intervening, which was so important. And if he hadn't woken up every day, or she hadn't woken up every day, and done all of that hard work, they wouldn't have had those millions of dollars in the bank in the first place. But the fact of the matter is that um, it's, if you are trying to change somebody's mind or somebody's heart, it is nearly impossible to just walk up to them and change their mind. So often if you're ch you've successfully changed somebody's mind and heart, it's because you have had a relationship with them in the first place. One of the things that we learned in our counseling classes at the seminary, our, our professors said um, that um, if you are going to be correcting somebody, trying to change somebody's behavior, the capacity for you to correct them, it's going to be proportionate to the amount um, of friendship you have with them, the amount of rapport that you have developed with them over time. And you know this to be true. Because if you've ever had somebody walk up to you and try to correct you, you know, you're in the grocery store and you know, your, your kids are crying and, or whatever the case may be, and somebody just walks up to you and just says, well, you should do this. You know, that, that, that's the uh, thing that stories are made of with friends about the gall of that person to come up to me and try to say this or that or the other thing and try to tell me how to raise my kids and, and all this different stuff because that person doesn't know you. They're just some stranger that you don't know from Adam. And what good is it going to be um, them trying to say anything to you in the first place? That's not, that kind of correction doesn't work. And maybe it's the way that they chose to do it. Maybe that's a part of the problem. But the fact of the matter is, the bigger problem with that kind of correction is that um, the person never bothered to put in these small acts of relationship with you in the first place. The times when we change minds and hearts are those times when we have put in these small acts of relationship with that person beforehand. And it's only because of those small acts of love that we performed beforehand, that we're able to perform the great act of love that everybody notices later. One of the most touching moments of my priesthood, it had to have come maybe about two years, three years into my priesthood, but it was, I was just going on a regular anointing call, and um, I, uh, you know, nothing unusual about the call, and then what ended up happening was I was taking, I walked in, and it was a man who was very severely ill, um, you know, every time he even moved his body, he, he hurt. But it was, um, I got to talking with his son, and his son was a very fascinating person, very awkward, um, I would say it was, you know, his, some of his mannerisms were a little bit strange, but it was one of those things that, you know, we just, we formed an instant connection with each other. And after about 15 to 20 minutes of talking, um, he explained as his father started nodding off to sleep, um, what happened in the first place, which brought them there um, in the first place, because for a while he had been estranged from his father and it was not because of anything that his father had done. It was because that guy personally, the son, had some very severe mental illnesses. And those mental illnesses wound up causing him to be homeless, living on the streets, um, you know, uh, wandering around and not being able to take care of himself. And then worst of all is that all of these really intelligent doctors were trying to get him to take his meds. You better take your meds or else, or you're not going to get better, or you better do this, you better do that. And the man would not listen to them because he thought that if he took his meds that something worse would happen. It was part of his own um, illness that he had. And what ended up happening, what got him to change, is it wasn't the really smart doctors. It wasn't the, uh, uh, the, the, just the fact that the doctors were right, which they were. It was the fact that his father hunted him down was able to locate him on the streets of the city, never gave up on him. And while he was out on the streets, he would go and visit him. And he would just see how he was doing. And then eventually, um, after um, getting that relationship with his son and maintaining it, his father was able to coax his son into taking his meds. And because he was taking those meds, his behavior changed. He was able to actually start um, making some positive improvements in his life. And the son was telling me the story about how much his father loved him and about how much that way he was able to get his life on track. But then, I mean, just um, so that's, that's a beautiful story, but it's again, it's a story of something big that happened 
that maybe we would all notice the Father and you know, we would think that his crown in heaven is going to be the fact that he basically saved his son's life that he gave his son a greater opportunity at life. And maybe if we, um, we looked at it from that point of view, we would pat the guy on the back and say, good job, you did one great deed in the course of your entire life. But the fact of the matter is, that great deed could not have been performed without the small deeds in the first place that led up to it. You can't drop Benjamins into the, the collection basket in the first place unless you had first put in the work. You can't change somebody's mind and heart unless you have first put in the work. And that's the reason why God cares about small deeds in the first place, at least one of the reasons. The reason why God cares about the small deeds is because it's very difficult to perform good deeds to change people's minds and hearts unless we have put in the work in the first place. And maybe that's why um, at the very beginning of this gospel we see um, these two gospel passages connected with one another. Maybe it just seems like two stories uh, that are just kind of thrown together. The one with Jesus condemning the Pharisees and warning his disciples about the Pharisees. And the other one talking about the widow putting in the two small coins. But maybe this is the reason why these passages were put by each other in the first place. Showing this woman is to be commended because in her small everyday deeds she was doing the right thing but the pharisees maybe their big problem in the first place was even though they were getting places of honor even though they were getting the title of rabbi even though they were getting honored in the synagogue the fact of the matter is in their day-to-day -day affairs they were not doing the uh, the small deeds with any sort of love in the first place they were, as Jesus called them um, in a different passage, whitewashed tombs. They, weren't, they, uh, uh, they looked good on the outside, but on the inside they were dead because they weren't trying to perform great deeds. They just spoke great deeds. So, brothers and sisters, this day, I would just um, say to you, um, this is, it's a double-edged sword. It's very beautiful, but it's also very challenging at the same time, is that God looks at your small deeds. So whatever your small deeds are this day, remember that your Heavenly Father is watching. Maybe that's scary to you, but I today think it's beautiful. Because in the, this act of looking on our small deeds, our Lord is seeing, yes, you are transforming into the person that I want you to be. You are putting in that work today so that maybe one day something great is going to happen out of it. And let us stand and offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord. That the church may receive the favor of the Lord in protection against the idols and false gods of our world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all nations may prosper under the, under the hand of our loving God and be pleased, blessed with peaceful resolution to conflict, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, for the poor, the imprisoned, the lonely, and those suffering from racial discrimination of any kind, may they be delivered from their burdens through the healing wounds of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may bless all the men and women from our community serving in the armed forces and return them safely to their families. Let us pray to the Lord all of our faithful departed, those who have died from natural causes, from chronic illness, or the COVID-19, may soon sit at the banquet of the Lord in his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we offer you these, our prayers and petitions. We ask you to hear and answer them, if they be in accord with your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord has the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Governed by your spirit, we pray, O Lord, those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, the professing you not just in word or in speech, but also in the works of truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. You are sent out, glorifying the Lord by your life.